In part two of exploring the wrecks of Port Phillip Bay, I sail across the bay to visit the wrecks of the Cerberus and the J7 submarine on the northeast shore and the unknown wreck at Altona Beach. On the way to Port Arlington for the night, the benefits off the previously added ballast and new mainsail saw Naringa cruising at 6 to 7 knots, beating into a 15 to 20 knot sea breeze, with a heel angle of only 10 to 15 degrees. Port Arlington now offers several free public jetty berths. They allow stays of up to 48 hours and the boat can be left unattended. Some require long mooring lines and can be a challenge when shorthanded to tie up. In the morning I head off on the 5 hour sail to Black Rock and the wreck site of the Cerberus. Crossing shipping channels a sharp lookout should be kept out for approaching ships. Despite their size many it travel at 20 knots or more. HMAS Cerberus was built for the colony of Victoria in 1870 and arrived in Port Phillip Bay in 1871. She was 225 feet long with a displacement of 3340 tonnes and was powered by steam. By the start of the First World War her weapons had become inoperable, so she acted as a guard ship, a munitions store and a submarine tender to the J-Class submarines. She was finally sold as scrap in 1924 and scuttled as a breakwater in Half Moon Bay, Black Rock. Time to visit the J7 submarine found in the middle of the Sandringham Yacht Club Marina. The HMS J7 submarine was built in the UK in the Devonport Docklands and was gifted to the Royal Australian Navy in 1919. She was 275 feet or 84 metres long with a displacement of 1760 tonnes. Powered by diesel and electric, she had a speed of 19 knots on the surface and 9.5 knots when submerged. She was finally decommissioned and sunk off Sandringham as a breakwater in 1926. It's off to Williamstown for some ship watching and to spend the night on the public mooring.
The final above water wreck is off an unknown boat found in the intertidal zone just east of the Altona boat ramp. Thought to be that of a 9.5 metre steel fishing boat, it is much younger than the others visited, with the battery and motor being identified as 1980s vintage. With a forecast of light winds, it's time for the 10 hour sail back to Limeburners Lagoon in Geelong before packing up in the morning.